don't know if you're in or out of the body. Neither did Paul. Y'all read 2 Corinthians chapter 12? Whether I was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. Or whether the man he was talking about, he didn't want to boast of himself, but it was Paul. Man, he was seeing, he was showing things. The Lord shows you things. Because he said the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. Didn't he say that? Yes, he did. Praise God. Watch this. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice. What do you say, my sheep? <laughs> they know my voice and they hear me. And behind me was a great voice as of, of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, and to Ephesus, Ephesus and unto Samaria, Samaria, Smyrna, excuse me, and Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And I, I, I am being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about with patched with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. That shows you authority. Eternal authority is in Christ's hands. He holds these keys. Majesty. And it says, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Because he can see straight through. He said, I know my sheep. He knows our hearts. His eyes were like as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp to his sword, and his countenance was as the sun shines in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives. We'll stop here for a minute. I am he who lives. If there's anything troubling you tonight, you can stop right at that verse and say, Jesus lives. What can be troubling me when I know my Savior lives and I am one of his sheep? Do you know the shepherd takes care of the sheep meticulously and watches over them? Anything that could happen to him. Any, any, if the enemy comes in or a beast comes in and tries to grab one, he still is watching over them and continues to rebuke the enemy and get the enemy away from the sheep. It's amazing. We have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. The enemy tries to intimidate us with situations. With situations on the outside of this world and this sheep here. But we got one who is ultimate authority over who speaks life into existence. And he is our shepherd. Can you imagine? You see John fail at his feet. Out of reverence. He wasn't scared of him like he's going to kill him. He just fell out of reverence because he's holy. When you really meet Jesus, you really know and see the holiness of God. That's how you know you've really been saved. Because Amen. you feel about this high. You know. Mm -hmm. You know that you are undone. And that it is His blood that covers you. It's nothing of your mighty pride or, or self-righteous works. Or I did good in the church today. Or I did good for the last 20 years. You know when you really meet Jesus. Mm -hmm. That there is nothing good about you. Because He's so holy. You're just at all. And you're thankful. You're thankful that He loves you like He does. You're thankful that He gave His life, His holy life, to save your soul. That's when you know that you've really met Jesus. There's so many Jesuses that's portrayed in the world today. And it's almost like that crazy game show, where the real Jesus, please stand up. Well, you can know the real Jesus by reading this right here. Amen. You read this Word of God and you see what John saw. And then you feel Him in your, in your heart the same way. And you know that He is what? Holy, with ultimate eternal authority and majestic. He is powerful, majesty. He is the one, the eternal, the holy one 
of Israel. He is Jesus Christ. He's the Almighty God. He's the one that opened the Red Sea. He was the cloud by day and the fire by night, praise God. He was the pillar of fire that came in in the book of Acts in chapter 2 in the upper room. The mighty rushing wind. The cloven tongues of fire. He is Jesus. In his eyes were like a flame of fire. Do you see that? His eyes were like a flame of fire. That's the power of God cleansing. Not only the judgment of God for those who will not come under the covering of Christ, but the power of God inspired to cleanse and purge us from any type of unrighteousness. Amen. When you really meet the real Jesus, there's not a self-righteous bone in your body. You crumble to humbleness, humility. You become humble, man, big time. That's the true sign of a disciple of the Lord Jesus. Humility. Because you know He is holy. Look at John here. John's like, wow. Now, John was a great apostle. And people, quite naturally, being humans, had lifted him up and put him up there. So that's John. Like they did Peter. Oh, that's Peter. You know? And even though John didn't want that acclaim, people still tend to do that. But when he seen Jesus, what did he do? He fell down. He just said, yes, I want to hear this. I'm one of your great apostles, Lord. I did what you called me to do. Come pat me on the back. <laughs> no. What did he do? When we come in to worship the Lord, like I said this morning, our eyes should be on the Lord. And we should just fall into his arms in reverence. Because he's holy. And he loves you. And he's merciful. And he knows we're humans, and he knows sometimes we don't have a mind on what we should have a mind on what we're trying. But if you'll do that, if you'll be prepared and walk in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, which is what? Every day. <laughs> the Lord's Day now is every single day you awaken. When you roll out of bed, and if you can, fall upon your knees. If you roll out of bed and you barely get up, just pray. However you can pray. You know, when you get older, some things start hurting. You roll out of bed and say, oh, I can't get on my knee this morning. That thing's killing me. But you can pray. As soon as you open your eyes, say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for another day. Thank you for life. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. Eternal life don't start when you die. Eternal life starts when you become saved. When you ask Him into your heart, when you surrender to Him, eternal life starts right there. It does. It's beautiful. You have eternal life here on this earth. And then after this body is shed and falls to the ground, it's still eternal life. You never cease to exist ever. And there's a second death that He keeps us from. 